All right, guys, today we got a great episode for you. We're gonna teach you how to stick whack, how to whack away loose pucks with violence so that we're not leaving pucks in that dangerous zone a foot or two out in front of you. We're gonna do some drills you can do at home to make your stick aggressiveness effective. We're also gonna talk about something very important. Is, is hockey too expensive? Is goaltending expensive? Yes, lessons are expensive, but we're gonna find out today what I think about that topic. Is hockey and is goaltending too expensive? As well, we're gonna break down peak performance. What is a peak performance? And how can you have repetitive peak performances so you're great eight games out of 10, nine games out of 10, not five games out of 10 and destined for the beer leagues. So stay tuned today, you're gonna learn a lot of stuff from the GOAT. All right, I wanna to talk to you about the eMentor program. And the eMentor program is your way to have an NHL goalie coach with you anywhere on the planet this season. What's involved? First of all, you get to talk to me after every game. We get to go through how the game went, things went well, things didn't, and come up with a strategy to fix any of the tactical weaknesses or technical weaknesses that came out in your game. We also do video analysis. So any of the video clips that you send me, I break down with you and try to find out if there's any weaknesses we need to fix. And also look at the great things you do. Rebound control, positioning, puck handling, touches, etc. We do a detailed analysis of your nutritional intake, prescribe a program to proper eat like a, a professional, as well as working on your off-ice fitness, goalie specific, in season and out season. We also give you homework. We have to critically analyze NHL scoring chances so that you can become a good reader of the play, good connect the dots guy, and have great goaltending wisdom. So in a nutshell, there's 24 seven analysis and conversation with the parents. And it's a great program for you to have your own NHL goalie coach, no matter where you live on the planet. Send me a direct message and we can start getting you on the path to the National Hockey League. All right, Kane, an important issue with your stick. You spend bazillion dollars on it. How much does that Bauer stick cost? 400. 400 bucks. It's a lot of dough. We gotta make sure we use it. It's a valuable weapon. We use it in poke checks. We use it in puck handling. But we've gotta be very good in this quiet area around in front of the white crease here, ahead of the blue crease, on whacking loose pucks away. So we're gonna do a stationary drill first to get used to your skills at doing that. So let's drop in your butterfly right here. <coughs> and when I say go, I want you to reach over and with your hand holding the stick at the paddle, don't slide it out. Push and slide over there and whack that first puck with your stick as violently as you can. Ready, go. Whack it away hard. Now back to the top of the crease. We're gonna do the same thing on the next puck down the line. Ready, go. Hard, whack it away. Hard like you're trying to hit your sister with it. Ready, go, hard, whack it. Nice. Two more doing that. Go, hard, hard. Nice. And ready, get a good pivot, plant and a push. Ready, go. Excellent. Now on this side, we'll have Rossi come over here. Now on the glove side, it's a little different. You're gonna use the back side of your stick. So you're gonna open up your stick and do a little sweeper. Same thing, pivot, plant, push. Whack that first puck away. Ready, go. <coughs> hard, yep. Pivot, plant, push, hard, go. Whack it away. Next puck, next puck, ready, go. Hard, hard. Flat ice, flat ice, ready, go. And last one, ready, go. Excellent, excellent. We've got five pucks around the crease. We're gonna give them each a number. Starting over here on your blocker side, that's gonna be puck number one, two, three, four, and five. Rossi's gonna get down, nice athletic stance, and you're gonna go on your butterfly. And I'm gonna call out the number of the puck. He's gonna launch in and try to whack that puck in the net before you whack it away. So as a recall, that's one, two, three, four, five. Four! All right. You can also use the backhand side of your stick on that. Two! Nice. I would probably have used the backhand side of your stick on that one. All right. Five. Get there, get there, and whack that away with your stick. No stick shyness, let's get violent on that. Well, we obviously know what the last one's gonna be. Six minus five. 
Set it back there. Let's do that one again. I don't want to make you do math because you're a goalie. Ready? Let's do that one last puck. One last puck, Rossi. We know it's this first puck here. You got to whack that away before he gets to it, Kane. Are ready? Go! That's all I want. Kane, let's be active with your stick and let's make your life easy, okay? Your stick can save a lot of goals from going in by preventing them from even getting a shot on net by being active with it. So let's use that $400 stick for all it's worth. All right, is hockey too expensive? Oh yeah, it's expensive. Goalie pads, several thousand bucks. Gloves, trappers, skates, custom skates, composite sticks, tournaments, association fees, private lesson fees, summer camp fees, thousands upon thousands of dollars to have your kid in hockey. But I want to make an argument about something different to that. I personally don't think hockey's too expensive and obviously I have a vested interest in it. I've been successful over the years and made a great living at it and the rewards that go with it. But I want to say I don't agree that hockey's too expensive and here's why. First of all, we got to start with motivation. So when you put your kid in minor hockey, a lot of times from the parental units, the motivation is so their kid can play a sport they love, they've seen it on TV or whatever, but in the back of almost every parent's mind, they believe their kid may have a chance to play in the NHL. So going into it, whether loosely or very directly, parents and kids are playing hockey for an outcome of taking it somewhere, doing something, playing in the NHL. And I think that's the problem. That's what makes it expensive. Yes, if you want your kid to play in the OHL, yes, if you want your kid to play college hockey, AAA, it's gonna cost money. It's no different than if your kid came up to you and said you wanna get into equestrian. Now obviously, I you know, went down south in Florida where I had a house. People would winter the horses there and they bring a full staff down. So equestrian's crazy expensive. Of course it's expensive. So if your kid chooses to be an equestrian, it's gonna cost you a ton of dough or you tell them don't do it. Now with hockey, if you're going into hockey knowing that it's expensive, if your kid wants to go to the higher levels, you're making that choice. You can play local league very affordably. You can get equipment secondhand, play against sports online, great protective gear, far better than the crap we had when I was a kid. And your kid can play hockey for the true reasons why you should be playing. Because you love the sport, because you wanna hang out with your friends, and make life lessons that are gonna stay with you the rest of your life and become a great citizen. Yes, competition is great, and maybe the competition isn't the same at the, the house league or the local league level, but at the end of the day, if you're gonna play at the higher levels competitive travel, yes, it's expensive, so make a choice. If you're saying hockey's expensive, then you know it is what it is. So my takeaway from all this is, Play hockey because you love it, and don't play hockey because you want to make the NHL. If it happens, that's great. And I know every kid that's ever grown up in Canada has a desire to play in the NHL. I did, half of you watching this probably did, but I don't think having been through it, seen it, you know, it's a realistic outcome for most kids. So just play for fun and work hard at it. Become the best you possibly can. And hey, if you catch lightning in the bottle, you end up being gifted physically, you end up becoming an amazing athlete and you make the NHL, it should be a surprise, not a letdown if you don't. So I don't think hockey's too expensive if you're playing it for the right reason. Think back to the best game you ever played, whether you're an adult or a kid still playing, We've all had that seminal game where we always remember it. We got a shutout in that state championship or we won the OMHA championship or the North American Silver Stick or maybe some of you won a Stanley Cup, who knows. But those peak performances where the game came to you naturally, where pucks were just hitting you, you were seeing the puck clearly, you had the right arousal level, you were alert, you were reading plays, you could tell what was about to happen beforehand. Those types of games where things go your way or what we call the peak performance. And quite frankly, it's not there all the time. That's an impossibility. Even NHL goalies don't have peak performances all the time. Now, your ratio of peak performances to poopy games to average game is where you can change your chances to move up in hockey. Think back to that best game you ever played. If you could do that exact game nine games out of 10, where do you think your career would go? What about eight games out of 10? What about seven games out of 10? So repeating peak performances on a consistent basis is gonna be the key to whether you keep climbing up the hockey ladder. And 
first thing, here's some advice on how to have repeatable peak performances. Identify a peak performance gain. That's the first step. So get a piece of paper, get a book, get your uh, iPhone notebook out and make a note. Who was it against? When was it? Describe some circumstances in the game. Was it a road game? How soon did you get to the arena? What was your pregame preparation? How much did you sleep the night before? What did you eat? When did you, you eat? All the very specific details of your preparation and what you did leading up to that great outcome. Now, you know NHL guys, most athletes as well in other sports, are known as being uh, superstitious. Now, being a slave to superstition and preparation in being too rigid is not what you want, but what we have with elite athletes, they know if they have a peak performance based on doing these 10 things and they get a peak performance, of course they're gonna to wanna to repeat those 10 things because it gives you confidence going into the game that in the past when you've done those 10 things, you've had an amazing outcome. So I think to increase your percentage of peak performances, the first thing you need to do is really identify a peak performance when it happens, wait till the next one if you haven't had one yet, and write down everything about it. Imagine it in vivid, high definition, 4K detail. Um, the great saves, how it felt, the smells, the sounds, all the stuff that went into that game. And then try to replicate your preparation for that. And it shouldn't be rigid, like I said. But as you go on, if you have a great game, write it down. If you have a shaky game, maybe play with your preparation a little bit. But over time, when you become a kid to an adult and you're playing at the highest possible levels, you will have played around with your preparation and get it dialed in pretty well so that you're really alert, your concentration is top shelf, and you're going to have those repeatable peak performances. And I think, you know, one thing that really drives ex players whether we're playing in the beer leagues or whoever we are the thing that drives us crazy is we know that on any given day we likely could have played at a much higher level when we played our absolute best but it boils down to this those that make it aren't the best those that make it are good enough often enough and i think that's what derails a lot of careers you're not good enough often enough maybe you're great seven games six games out of ten and that might be your career ender. So let's do this. Start documenting your next peak performance. Get into a habit of repeating in a consistent way your game preparation so that at the end of the day, you're gonna have a better chance of having a peak performance and playing at the highest possible levels you could.